Yeah, um, shall I go first? Um, so good morning everybody, welcome to, uh, to this session this morning, Cyber Tuesday. Uh, my name is Gerard Manley, I work for an organisation called the Leicester and Leicestershire Enterprise Partnership, um, but everybody normally refers to us as the Leicester. My name is Nicola, I work for the University of Leicester um, and I work with students in years four through to years 13 and talk about university and pathways and how to get there and I'll be talking to you a lot more on Friday when we talk to some of our university students as well. I'm Robin, Marie Bermire, which is the company you'll hear about later today from me. Um, and you may hear from me today on Friday. Perfect, thank you and my name is Becca so I work for a project called Pathways and Pathways is all about trying to support young people such as yourselves to make the best possible decisions for yourselves and your future. So this is Future Me. So just a little bit of a recap of yesterday. Yesterday we were very much talking and having that introduction to kind of what skills are and that's what this programme is all about. The aim of the programme is for us to work with you to try and figure out where you're at at the moment to have an understanding of your current skill set and for you to be developing that over the next six weeks so that when you're going back into your careers lessons and when you're taking your education steps and your career steps forward you've got a clear idea of what you need to get to where it is that you want to go. So today's session in particular um, we are going to be looking at a range of self-management skills and we'll talk a little bit more about what self-management skills are and we'll be thinking around where we're at and are there any areas that we could improve. We're going to think about how they're essential for you and for that future me that we've been talking about in the world of work and we're going to be hearing from Robin who works for Hariba Myra about how she uses those in her sector which is cyber and AI. We're also going to um, then be having a chance to speak to her in a bit more depth and find out a lot more about her role day to day and what it's like to work in a role and her journey to getting there. And then we're going to get you to think about whether or not your self-management skills make you more or less likely to consider a career in cyber or AI sector. So, if I just hand over to you, Gerard, is that all right, just to introduce our self-management skills? Yeah, of course. Okay, so um, first of all, for everybody who came along to our session yesterday, um, one of the things that we really recommended was to download the World of Work Young People's Guide, which is available on the LEP website. We'll send the link out because we'll refer to that um, as we go through our sessions each week. So um, that's a sort of an action point from us. You'll find it really helpful and it will support a lot of the information that we talk about on each of these sessions each week. So what you can see here that self-management skills, um, really there are a whole set of interrelating areas in terms of what makes up good self-management. And it's not always easy to do because we've got a lot of conflicting things sometimes around our own personal learning and working styles. But let's just take a moment to look through some of these in a little bit more detail so we get an overview of what self-management is. Well, first of all, it's initiative. So actually, Self-management can be about you thinking, is there something here I could do on my own? Is it actually something that I don't necessarily always need to be told to do? So let's pick a really, self, uh, really straightforward example. We're all in lockdown at the moment. So how have you been using your initiative to stay motivated? Okay, well, maybe one of those self-management skills is about organising yourself. And it can be really quite straightforward in terms of some key things that you can do to organise yourselves but it can help you to be structured and ordered. And we're gonna hear from Robin a little bit later on, and she's gonna talk about some of the things that she does in her day job and how she keeps herself organized, structured, and make sure that actually she does everything that the organization she works for expects her to do as well. Accountability is a tough one. This is about taking responsibility for our own actions. Sometimes that can be challenging because not everything always goes to plan. But actually, there are some things, for example, completing projects or homework and getting them into a deadline that we have accountability for. So you've got to look at how can I make sure that actually there are things that I'm accountable for. But sometimes, actually, we have to look at what other people are accountable for as well. And how can we all work together? 
sometimes working together actually is down to time management and I think we've all been guilty sometimes of leaving things till the last minute but actually well done to everybody who's made it into this session today and who joined us yesterday great time management you made it here we might have had a few technical things while we settled down but this is about how you manage your time productively as well so it's a all it's about avoiding sometimes that that monkey who gets in your mind and tells you that it's fine to go off and play xbox for a bit or it's a lovely day out there so let's just go and sit in the sunshine so sometimes time management is about completing tasks looking at rewards and actually how you're going to use your time productively and that leads into actually making good decisions and learning from when we make bad decisions. Bad decisions. So selecting a choice of options that you've got. So let's think about Becca's opening comment this morning. If you go into Nando's, how do you decide which one you're going to opt for? Well, it can be about how you're feeling on the day, but actually there could be some rules that you've got to hear from as well. So when you're in the world of work, actually you might have to make decisions about budgets. Why do you choose to give X thousands of pounds to a particular budget. Well, again, we'll hear today about some of those reasons that could be, well, it's about developing a new product, a new service. It's gonna actually mean that my self-management skills meet the objectives of my business. But you know what? That's quite a lot to go through. So every now and then we have to take a step back and we have to look at ourselves and our own mental health and wellbeing and think about stress management. Right now, we've all been working and learning from home in some really strange situations. And I'm sure that your schools and parents and carers have also been sort of looking at making sure that there is a balance there. So that sometimes, you know, we look at what are the techniques we can use to bring about stress management and not let it get too high. Sometimes it can be as simple as a walk in the garden or some screen time um, that's just sort of looking at uh, kittens on YouTube. Sometimes it's about reading a book, but the important thing is that there's always help out there. But put all of those things together, and that's quite a compelling set of skills for self-management. So I think, Becca, are we going to do a poll now to see? Yeah, so you, right, now we've had that things. very eloquent explanation of what self-management skills are. Let's see where all of you guys are at. So I'm just going to launch a poll here. And quite simple, just want you guys to let us know which self-management skill, now we've been through them all, do you think, you think, ah, yeah, do you know what, I'm always late, I definitely need to be working on that one a bit more. So which one do you think that you need to work on a bit more? So, oh, time management, oh, oh, stress management, and I think, oh, yeah, stress management's in the lead, oh, Time management. Oh, yeah. Nice wow, it's a really, a really, a really mixed bag here. Really mixed bag. Who needs live sport? We can commentate on polls. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's what I was just thinking. I was thinking it's a bit like a horse race. So we've got <laughs> forty-six. We've got eight more people. Do you want to cast your votes very quickly? I'll give you five more seconds to have your say. Five, four, three, two one fantastic so i'm just going to share all of the results with you so that was really interesting actually so we've got some of you in the room recognizing that your initiative could use a little bit more work um, and perhaps your organization but actually without a doubt what a lot of us are saying is that our stress management and our awareness of our own well-being is something that we need to think about i think particularly for you guys at the moment that's something that we really all need to be taking into consideration but for you guys there's been lots of changes and we're going to go back into the classroom soon or have exams and things to prep for for next year so it's really good that some of you've got that awareness right now and that's the point at which we start to think about how we can develop those skills a little bit more so i'm just going to stop sharing those results i'm just going to change my screen because the one thing that i would like just to highlight to you all is the resources that you've all been sent so you should be able to see um, now a word document entitled week two although it's session two a self-management worksheet and these worksheets were emailed out to all of you and will be emailed out to all of you every morning when i send you the zoom link i had a few questions yesterday about these resources and where you should put them and what you should do with them 
And the simple answer to that is that all of these resources have been put together to help guide you through your future me journey. And so this one in particular, what we're asking you to do is to take some time to think about each of the different um, skills or that come under that self-management bracket and just have a think about where you're at with them. Can you give some examples of when you've used them that might help you decide if you're really good at it or it requires some improvement? We've got the definitions here and there's also some links to some really interesting resources all about self-management and how you can develop it. And in answer to your question about when should you do them, where you should submit them, with this course you can do as much or as little as you want. The main point is that you are getting the most out of it to help you direct that future mean, to help you grow your awareness around your skill set. So some of you, when you signed up, you told me that you use Unifrog and that you've got Show My Homework or Google Classroom. And they're absolutely places that as you complete each of the tasks or the worksheets at your leisure, you upload them so you've got it all in one place and you can share it with your teachers or your careers advisors. So this is Bragfolder, quite simple, bragfolder.com. And it's something free that you can sign up to. And it's a personal portfolio. So you can um, upload resources, you can upload any testimonials, and it's a place where you can start to build a personal profile that you can use to help with applications to college, for jobs, to apprenticeships, and those types of things. So that's something that you can all use and really encourage you to use. And the other thing for those of you who have joined us new for today's session, what we did yesterday was we all went through together a self-assessment quiz. So we took the buzz quiz and that just gave us a really short, sharp insight into our, or some of our character <laughs> traits. It gave us some advice, it gave us some celebrities that we're like. So just a reminder for those of you that want to try a different one, um, that there's lots of free self-assessment tools on the internet that you can use and you can try it out. So we talked today about self-management and we said that our sector we were going to be exploring was cyber security and artificial intelligence. So back over to you, Gerard. Thanks, Becca. So we just want to spend a few moments um, before we sort of um, get to know and hear from Robin. Um, it's just explaining a little bit around what cyber security is and what artificial intelligence is, because we hear people talk about it a lot, but sometimes actually it can mean so many broad different things. So it's really hard to sort of tie the absolute definition down. And actually, because this is a world that changes so fast, then, you know, these are constantly broadening sectors. But let's just take a moment to look at cybersecurity. Well, that's about protecting systems, networks, programs from digital attacks. Here's a great example. We're using Zoom at the moment. It's been in the headlines. We've probably heard it. But somebody somewhere is doing all of the protection to make sure that we can use this in a, in a safe way. So it's about putting in effective cybersecurity measures, or as effective as we can be, because actually we know that there are challenging times and wherever there is a solution, someone is always trying to bring about a challenge for some of those things in terms of making sure that those systems are resilient and that they're actually not open or susceptible to attacks. So constantly we're seeing cybersecurity having to innovate. Um, and I'm delighted that we've got somebody who works in this field who's going to talk to us about some of those things uh, in a little bit more detail. Artificial intelligence is slightly different in that that's the ability of digital computers or computers that control robots to actually perform tasks that sometimes are carried out by humans. And if we think about some of those sectors, actually they can carry out thousands and millions and billions of operations and tasks that would probably take us more than our lifetime. And there's this constant development of artificial intelligence systems being applied to new and interesting areas. So it started off with simple things at the time, like recognizing number plates and feeding that into um, police systems, right through to now, as we've seen with um, the impact of COVID, where actually we've got some businesses who are taking temperature of their staff as they're walking and assessing them act actually as they move into, into that business. So this is constantly a changing field at the moment, and that's why it's a key sector. So there's some other things to think about here as well. Um, quite often people think about cybersecurity and artificial intelligence as just being 
programming and machines. Um, but we were talking a little bit earlier before the session here that also it's about physical access. So if somebody can, for example, gain physical access to a secure building, then they've already gone through probably one of the first firewalls of that organisation. So there is always still a human aspect and actually there is a growth in that area as well. So let's think about things like cybersecurity and artificial, uh, artificial intelligence is a knowledge based economy and it's very valuable. So some of those competitors that are out there would actually probably be looking at maybe doing some scrupulous things to get into some of their competitors information. So we think about Hariba Myra, who we're going to hear from later, just how sophisticated they have to be to protect all of that absolute cutting edge information they've got. So I think, Becca, it's about time that we, uh, we put our delegates here to the test and see what they think around a short quiz. So I'm going to hand back to you for our cybersecurity snap quiz. Right, awesome. So let's find out what we already know about cybersecurity and AI. So I've just enabled the chat so you can chat freely to everyone. Um, but the main reason for that is to tell us what you think the answers to some of these questions are. So, first question, get your quiz brains on. According to USA Today, how many autonomous cars will be sold annually by 2040? This one's multiple choice. So in the chat now, do you think it's 33 million sold per year, 10 million sold per year, or 20 million sold per year? Okay, we've got a couple of 20 millions in there. 20, 33, 20. C, C, yeah. Okay. okay, so the general consensus. Oh, oh, we've got three going 33 million. Okay, so it seems that, yeah. Okay, so no one thinks 10 million. I would say the majority are thinking 20 million. And the answer actually is. Thirty-three million. They expect by 2020, 2040, there'll be 33 million autonomous cars sold annually. So next question. How much money is it predicted self-driving cars will generate annually for the world economy? This is an open, open data question. How much money is it predicted that self-driving cars would generate annually for the world economy? So think, is it going to be millions, billions, trillions? What do we think? Two billion, a lot? It's a bit of a cop out, come on. <laughs> Cars don't generate Cars money. Don't generate money. There's always, <laughs> always a smart person there. 100 billion. Okay, that's a lot of zeros from Lewis going through. 8 billion. billion, oh, it's going up. Okay. We got, anyone going to raise? Naya, oh yeah, Alex, 600. You don't see it. Seven points. <laughs> right. Okay. So I'm actually going to tell you the answer. The answer. Oh, William. Perfect timing. Yeah. Whoa. The answer is seven trillion. But why? Are they going to generate seven trillion because manually driven cars will become illegal? Because everyone will want one. They'll be the new and the must have. Or is it because of delivery services like Amazon utilising them? What do we think? A, B or C? Why are they going to generate so much money? Oh, mix. I don't think I can call it on this one. Got lots of... Oh, no. C's taking the lead. A. Mm. Okay. So the actual answer is C. Because delivery services like Amazon will be looking at utilising them. So rather than having drivers, they'll be able to use autonomous cars to get all of our deliveries and things to us. Next question. In 2017, how many British internet users were victims of cybercrime? What do we think, guys? Take to the chat. Was it A, 50,000, B, 1 million, or C, 17 million? How many do we think? 1 million, 17, B, B, C, B, 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 B. Lots of people going for the middle option. C, 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 C. <laughs> cool. So let's just reveal the answer. The answer is 17 million. 
British internet users were victims of cybercrime in 2017. How about that? Next question. On average, how long does it take a company in the UK to realise their data has been compromised? Is it A, less than 24 hours, B, 30 days, or C, 120 days? A year. That's not an option. A, B, 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 A, B, all, all we're mixed. Between A and B, all we've got one C, B. Right, so the answer is, drum roll, and this was the one that really surprised me, it's actually 120 days. It actually takes 120 days on average for companies in the UK to realise that their data has been compromised. So um, yeah, that one definitely made me think. And then I think we're going to go on to what is our final question. So this one is a very relevant question related to our special guest. That was my phone dropping on the floor, apologies. Uh, a Citroen C1 fueled by diesel can still start if the air temperature drops to minus 16 degrees centigrade. Is that true or false? What do we think? If it gets super, super cold, can a diesel fueled Citroen C1 still start? Oh, oh, we're very mixed here. I think for every true, I'm seeing a false. For every false, I'm seeing a true. So the answer is actually false. And do you know how I know that? I know that because Top Gear actually went to visit Hariba Myra and went into their wind tunnel and they put a car down to, I think they got down to like minus 30 degrees centigrade and the diesel fuel actually froze. If you've never watched Top Gear image and you're missing out. <laughs> So, without further ado, thank you everyone for putting your brains on and getting involved here. So, back to the realities of the artificial intelligence and cybersecurity sector. So, I hand back to you on that one, Gerard. Thanks, Becca. Okay, so um, really interesting quiz. I just think it shows you where this sector is going in terms of, you know, all those companies that are getting hacked for 120 days. They'd like to get that down to zero. They need people who can help them do that. Um, so yeah, good quiz, good answers. So let's just take a moment to look at this as a, as a sector for Leicester and Leicestershire. And, and what does it mean um, for us in terms of employment and skills? And sort of um, future aspirations perhaps of, of, of you as a young person in that sector. So um, many sectors use cyber security. Um, it isn't just the high-tech companies, actually most organisations have a computer network and therefore we realise that they've, they've got to protect these things in some ways. Um, so have a look at page 22 of the world of work um, when you find yourself with a few moments, not necessarily now, but you'll, you'll find a lot more information on there. And you can see from the slide that Beck has put up, just the many different roles there. One thing that I want to point out is the skills and qualities, because we survey our businesses all the time. Um, what always comes out in probably the top three is communication skills. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Here we've got a job that actually real, needs real technical knowledge, but actually what they're also looking for is your ability to work as a good communicator. So there are, in Leicester and Leicester, there's an increasing number of companies that are automating their processes using artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, but for example, cybercrime is growing. And we know this, it's a growing area of police work. So there's a lot of work happening around algorithms, data analytics, facial recognition, sure. tools that can help police resolve crimes quickly. So there's a real broad application to this. So what we know in Leicester and Leicestershire, that the growth areas are around things like cybersecurity, risk management, technology-led innovation. And again, some of those things we'll get to hear about from Robin. Companies in this sector, though, do really welcome young people with high motivation, enthusiasm, and I've mentioned the strong communication skills. Just to give you a couple of examples um, of other companies that work in this sector, in Leicester, we've got the IBM Client Innovation Centre, and actually they have a role um, there where they do take on and have taken on apprentices in the past. And we've got organisations that you might not have even heard of, like the Access Group out in Loughborough, and they're one of the fastest UK growing software companies. So I think, you know, actually we're seeing a lot of companies who work in this sector, big players, want to come and have a place here in Leicester. 
Um, but then we've also got places where you can actually learn some of these skills. So if, you, if you're not aware of um, outside of our colleges and universities, have a look at the Myra Technology Institute, which is based on the site of Hariba Myra. They've got some really cool things happening there. But what does all this tell us? Well, it tells us that right now there's a real shortage of AI talent and skills locally and worldwide. So on Friday, when we have the second part of this session, we're also going to hear a little bit more about some of the career pathways that you can take into this and some of those different routes. Um, but I'm going to hand back to Becca now. Um, I think we're going to now have a look at a video uh, from Hariba Mara before we actually get to hear from Robin. <laughs> Do, I will pass you guys over to Robin. Hello Robin, welcome and thank you for joining us. Hiya, I hope so. Um, yeah, so um, I'm Robin, I'm a graduate engineer at Hariba Myra, so I only started in September. Um, and yeah, so as my bio says, I studied at the University of East Anglia, I've got a Master of Maths. Um, I was originally on a bachelor's course and then I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I did a master's and that's got me here which is great um, and yes yeah, so I currently work in the connected autonomous vehicles department which was shown briefly on that video and later on I've got another video to show you that shows a bit more about that um, and I also was working cyber security which is part of our research horizon scanning department um, could I get the next? Yeah. so yeah um, Hariba Myra is um, automotive consultate a consult consultancy company sorry we have a lot of test services, um, so we do crash testing, we do emissions testing. Crash testing is quite fun because you pull a car on a pulley and it gets crashed into a wall. Um, we also do vehicle durability testing, so the cars get driven around, or lorries or buses um, get driven around on our proving ground, which has a variety of different surfaces to test on. So we've got like the wet handling surface, um, the dry circuit, the city circuit, um, and a whole variety of roads so one of the circus has um potholes in it just to stimulate simulate um normal road surfaces that you experience so that's mainly our testing side and then we have the engineering and technology side which is stuff like our battery development suites um and then we also have the research and development departments which is the stuff like horizon scanning which is predicting what's going to come in the future so, for example, someone in Horizon Scanning is working on fuel cell develop fuel cell battery development. So he's currently the expert of that in our company. Um, another pe person is working on a low emissions motorcycle, and someone else is working on something called My Brain, which is um, driving a car with your brain. So telling it where to go just with your thoughts. Um, so, with uh, the graduate scheme that I'm on, we do four six month placements throughout the company. 
Um, so I've started in horizon scanning and then I've now moved to connected autonomous vehicles in March. Um, so yeah, and on the next slide, please. Oh, wrong way, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so horizon scanning um, is, yeah, like I said, looking into the future to just think what's going to come. Uh, so our main services were process development, which was developing products for people to use. So my colleague was developing a product that would, with one click of a button, find all the insecurities on a car that someone could potentially use to break into it. So, for example, with car hacking, you've got things like the um, key, key fob cloning so they can copy your car key and get into your car like that but then a scary one that we also have is something called well it's so it's been done by someone in america who they hacked a jeep whilst it was on the motorway and they they told people they were going to hack it um but they were attempting to um, slow down on a motorway and i do have a link for that if that wants to be sent out later um so yeah and then we also do some consultancy work in horizon scanning and then we do some testing so test how vulnerable your car is my main role was research in that department so i was researching a way to describe how safe a car is and what constitutes safe because it can never be fully safe due to the fact that humans are usually the factor that makes something unsafe because you can't we're not reliable creatures so that was my main role um, and then I moved on to connected autonomous vehicles. If I could get the next slide. So there should be a video on this slide. What we saw Prince William getting in and out of in that Hariba Myra video. And it's called a network guided vehicle. So as you setting up the car and what it's gonna do, it's gonna drive around the track with no one on the steering and no one on the pedals. Um, this is being lovingly done by John, our engineer. Um, and so, yeah, this is one of the things that we're working on. And this is a combination of horizon scanning and cab together because this is what's going to become the future, hopefully. And as you can see, it gets driven around. I went in this, it was very bizarre. Um, so, yeah, I'll just let you watch it. <laughs> but there's so in this simulation the car around the track is real but there are various other cars that are not on the track in real life but they are in a simulation so the yellow blocks with myra on it are technically other vehicles We just sort of see how it merges in with the other cars without causing any issues. And yeah, and then we have a situation when one car suddenly stopped. And so our driverless car has to now react in time. And you see the pedal just pressing by itself, no one's touching it and it stopped to avoid hitting all these other cars. So this sort of thing will hopefully be used in the future as a taxi service, or like, as that quiz said, a delivery service for Amazon, where you can use it to get taken to school in, things like that. There's so many possibilities with these connected autonomous vehicles. Um, yeah. So my main role in CAV is something called Very CAV which is a way to test these cars without driving them on the road and obviously causing danger to people. But so the problems we have with testing cars on the road is that we don't know when it's been tested enough because it could be tested for years and still have problems, but we don't know until the problem happens. There's so many scenarios. Um, and obviously you're never going to encounter every single scenario in the testing. And this could take years and years and years. So it's so, like so much effort would need to be put into it. Um, so our main aim is to create a simulation platform to do all this so that you're not spending years testing a car and 
still finding problems and you're able to test as many possible scenarios as you can think of without actually causing any danger to anyone. Um, can I get the next slide, please? So what this is just a very confusing overview of what we do, but basically it gets tested, it goes into the simulation environment, and then there's a whole variety of things in the test oracle you can test. So you can test the comfort of the driver's trip. So was it a comfortable journey for them or was the steering very jerky so they didn't like it? Um, you can test how dangerously close they get to break. So this is where my main area is. So I'm researching how to decide when a situation is critical and there could be harm to the driver. Um, and then this just loops around. And so each time you test a smaller and smaller number of scenarios so that um, yeah, so that you're not spending ages testing something that you know is safe. So you know it can go down the road safely and not hit anyone when there's no people around. So you're not gonna test that over and over again. Um, so my main role in this was is the test oracles. Um, what's on the next slide? I think I've forgotten. Ah, sorry, okay, so go back. Um, so yeah, so with this, um, in this new department, I was started for two weeks in Myra before and the lockdown started. So then now we're all working from home. So I didn't really know anyone in my department. So leading on to self-management, we've had to find ways to show how we're doing our work and stay in contact with people. So I know that I am personally a very quiet person. So I've had to be organized with showing my calendar, saying when I'm available so I can talk to people and they can talk to me. And what we found is that by being very open about your work, you're able to show to people that you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, but they don't have to babysit you because you're taking the initiative to do what you need to do. Um, and then I think that would lead on to the challenge. Uh, these are also my contact details. If anyone wants to ask more questions, um, I would recommend emailing or calling as I'm not in the office. Perfect, thank you. So that was so fascinating Robin, I know I've got loads of questions but um, this isn't about me, this is about our, uh, our young people that are in the room. So the chat is now open, so you guys, um, if you've got any questions for Robin, please do feel free to ask them in the chat and we'll try and get through as many as we can in the time that we've got. So any questions for Robin? I do. I see many, many different things. The amazing thing is that Myra does so many different things that I didn't think were possible. So I really do like my job, yeah. I get a whole chance to do anything. Because I'm on the graduate scheme, I get to go to different departments that I wouldn't necessarily choose. With a lot of difficulty to make these cars where we don't control them, we have a very smart man who, was, who made the NGV. He spent a lot of time developing it and a lot of testing. Um, I just sort of, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I first applied to this job. So I kind of ended up applying around. It's probably not the best advice, but it, sound, like, it sounded interesting. So I wanted to do it. We don't actually make the cars yet. We're just testing them and we're developing them. So we probably, well, we're not a manufacturing company, but we basically, with that autonomous car that you saw, was a normal car that we had, and then we altered it. Um, but we're not the ones to produce it. I do like my job, it's great. It's just interesting. There's very smart people here as well, it's crazy. What do you think which ones? It's definitely a lot more risky with more the technology develops, but that's the reason why we're doing what we're doing. So my project is a way to decrease all that risk with the testing to do it. Um, and yeah, so we're trying to minimize that risk so when these cars come out, it is safe. I study quite hard. I found my fourth year of university quite difficult, but in the end we got there. Um, it took a while for me to develop that, but I think with a lot of work it is possible for a lot of people. And you don't have to have a master's to get into everywhere. Like one of my colleagues on the project is still great. We've got apprenticeships as well. Oh, so many questions. Lewis has asked, what specific skills did you need to get your job, which is a very uh, fitting question for this programme? Yep, yeah, so 
a lot of my colleagues are engineers, but I'm a mathematician. So I know my company specifically is looking for more mathematicians and computer scientists and having those analytical skills. Definitely. Also, I've found um, having computer coding skills as sorry, that was my door. Um, computer coding skills is very useful. I'm learning Python on the job right now. Um, so yeah, I think it's the ability to have analytical thin thinking is very wanted right now for this department, this skill sector. Um, self management skill, I think, is communication. I need a lot of communication in my job, especially now that I'm not working in the office and the ability to manage my time so that I know what the most effective thing to be doing at the moment is. These are very good questions. I've not heard about any research in self-charging cars, by the way, with the solar panels or the wheels. I know someone, there might be some research into looking into self-driving cars along the road, so they charge as they drive. Um, so <laughs> And are you always working to deadlines and things like that, Robin, in your in your job? Do you have to kind of work as part of a team to meet deadlines at the same time as everyone else? Yep, definitely. So our project now is a Innovate UK funded project. So we have definitely have deadlines to stick to because we're funded and because we work with other companies to create the part that we're making. So um we have to rely we have to be on deadline so that the other companies are not relying on us waiting for us to be late and we have integration milestones which are done every other month or so so we definitely have to make sure we're on time with things to not let anyone else down um Kirsty's asking about staying productive whilst you're working from home how have you found that that's a million dollar question isn't it <laughs> <laughs> that has been tricky i will not lie um it's not it's been very difficult to make like maintain that same level of product productivity especially as you don't go in the office to see everyone but you get into a routine you have to sort of make yourself make sure that you still stay in that routine of getting up every morning getting into clothes not just sitting in your pajamas all day as some people love to do and i would as well um but <laughs> and definitely just making sure you still talk to the team members and they sort of remind you that you're, you're still here you're still part of a team that you're with um myra doesn't make cars we test them and I've been for since September 2019, so nine months-ish. Perfect. So um, if you have got any more questions, do continue to put them through. And if there's any um, that will be useful for the whole group, we can ask Robin to answer those and I can send them round. Um, what we did talk about at the very beginning, and actually I'll ask Gerard to pick up here, was that there's actually lots of different sectors that use cybersecurity and AI. Thanks, Becca. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's amazing to hear some of the work that's uh, happening at Myra. I really liked the sound of the um, my brain. I'm just thinking a future me, my brain connection there. Um, so other sectors, though, to think about, uh, because as we mentioned, it touches most part of our lives now, whether it is, you know, Netflix, because that's an online system, somebody's got to protect those things. So do think broadly about what cybersecurity and artificial intelligence means. But here's just a few examples of companies and organisations. I've mentioned earlier the police force. Local government deals a lot with our personal information, whether it is about our homes or our families. Um, fire service, again, making sure that actually, you know, we, we are keeping safe. HMRC, just think of all that valuable information they have around people's personal finances, whether it's a company or whether it is an individual, how valuable that would be um, as a commodity if heaven forbid that ever got out there. Um, prison service, keeping the inmates safe, but actually at the same time, still making sure that they feel like they're connecting and you know that actually they're able to rehabilitate through some of the access to services that might be online. Um, immigration services about people coming into the country with the, the right um, levels of safety um, and the armed forces, you know, that civil defence. And again, some of that takes place at, um, at Hariba Myra. So um, I won't go through all of the things that you can see on the slide right hand because we've picked out some of those. Um, but what I will say is, you know, take some time, have a look at the world of work. Um, do speak to your careers advisor at school because they'll also be able to connect you into some of these pathways and we'll talk about it more on Friday. So um, I think it's time for our employer challenge, Becca. 
I think it is. So as we said yesterday, when we were introducing the programme to you all, for those of you that are newly joining us today, every Tuesday we'll be setting you a challenge. It's going to be inviting you to put your skills to the test. So this week is all about self-management. And we've asked each of our employers to give us a challenge and give us an opportunity to put to you so that you can demonstrate those skills. And partly it's for fun, it's for learning, but also it's for prizes. So each week we will be judging some of the entries or some of the challenges that we get submitted to us. And there is a chance that you will win an Amazon voucher for yourself, but also up to 500 pounds of resources or IT kit for your school as well. So everybody wins by you taking part in these challenges. So Robin, can I just ask you to tell us a little bit about your challenge and what we'll be looking for in the winners. Yep, so my challenge is basically, since this whole lockdown has started, a lot of my main issues have been around communication and showing all these self-management skills of initiative, organization and accountability. Um, so I was wondering if you guys could tell me three ways that I can show that I'm still doing my work, I'm still working productively, and I'm aware that what I'm doing has an effect. So you have this, have, I'm happy for like a list of this or a paragraph or even a poster if you're feeling creative. Um, but yeah, just three ways that I can stay in contact with my team and I can show that I'm t taking on all these self-management skills, even the three, the other three that you saw at the beginning about stress management and I can't remember what the other two were, <laughs> um, but yeah, anything to do with self-management, three ways that you can show and stay in contact with your team and still be productive as you were, as if you were in the office or if you were in school. And are there lots of different ways? Are you open to how um, our attendees and our participants demonstrate this to you, Robin? Yeah, any way you want, basically, that we can be emailed in. I believe it's only on the email. Fantastic. And again, you don't have to share um, your entries with us if you don't want to. You can have this as a reflective task just for you. That's absolutely fine. But for those of you that are happy to share, that gives us an opportunity for us to have a look and feedback on some of the ones that we think are the best and ultimately to decide a challenge winner. So next steps and next time. So make sure you've got Friday at 11 a.m. in your diaries. As ever, I'll be sending out an email at 9am that will have the newest uh, Zoom link in there for you. And as I said at the beginning, please, please remember to sign into the meeting with the name that you registered so we can let you back in. Have a think about the resources. Do have a look at the worksheets that we showed you and do have a, a or take the time, sorry, to reflect on where you think you're at with your own self-management skills and how you could work on developing those and listening to Robin's given us a really good insight into how these are really really relevant and useful for us in the world of work and in our future careers. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen.